are really great. How are you? Uh, quick show of hands, how many folks in the room are developers? So not a lot of people, okay, just kidding. Uh, um, how many are publishers? None, any other uh, startups selling to developers? So mostly developers. Uh, how many of these developers are ad-supported developers? So you're trying to make money through ads to a few, few folks. Uh, how many developers are not trying to make money at all? Why aren't you trying to make money at all? Long story. Okay, money sucks. More money, more problems. Uh, okay, uh, that's, a, that's a nice little uh, breakdown. Uh, thanks for coming to the talk. Uh, my quick uh, background, uh, I've uh, created along the way in the kind of past 15 years, uh, five uh, mobile advertising startups and invested in about 100. Uh, I'm now a full-time investor, actually with a, with a firm called ENIAC. The word ENIAC comes from uh, the world's first computer. Uh, and we thought it'd be ironic calling a, a mobile-only fund ENIAC, given the processing power of your phone as a billion X ENIAC that took up this entire run. Um, of 100 investments, uh, there's been a few companies that have broken out uh, that you've probably heard of, like Airbnb uh, and Uber. Uh, but most of them are kind of two folks and a dog. Uh, sometimes just a dog, actually. We have one company that's that's just a dog. It's doing very well. Um, I don't know. So just to give context, there's a there's a little. These are probably too small to read, but there's a company called Navdy, N-A-V-D-Y. That's a heads-up display for your car, and it's an actual device that you place above your steering wheel, and it syncs with your Android or your iPhone. Am I allowed to say I don't know? A droid phone? Okay. Um, and, uh, and it actually projects notifications in front of the road so that you don't actually have to veer off. Your eyes don't have to veer off the road. You can just literally focus and you're not constantly looking down or texting. You can answer calls with your finger, um, you know, or text messages with your, with your thumb. Uh, and it's voice activated as well. So for us, mobile is not just on or around the handset. Um, it's anything wirelessly connected uh, to the internet. So that's a, that's a sample of, kind of some of the stuff that we invested. Um, so this is kind of a, an interesting, and some of you might have seen this when uh, we had the new Pope in, uh, come in uh, last year. But this is literally the same scene uh, between you know eight years apart. And you can tell, like, obviously mobile is, mo mobile is the key ingredient, right, that, that's happening in 2013. By the way, uh, never uh, take a picture with your, with your iPad. I fucking hate those people, right? Anybody that you see taking a picture with an iPad, you should just, like, knock the iPad out of their hands. Uh, you have my permission to do that. Uh, almost putting everything within arm's reach of desire across the customer's journey. Why mobile? Can you imagine living without it? Uh, the stats have probably gone up now. Uh, quick show of hands, how many folks actually have their phone more than three feet away from them at any time during the day? Why is your phone more than three feet away from you? Because I see it's part of the day. Okay. It's charging. It's charging. But if you had an outlet like right under your pillow, then it would probably be there. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? So it's pretty scary, like your phone is with you at all times, right? Um, you grow old, you lose your hair, like I am, but you never lose your phone. Uh, you leave your, your home without your wallet, but you never leave your home without your phone. Your phone's with you all the time, right? It's crazy. Uh, the rest of the world cannot live without their phone. There's now seven billion folks on planet Earth and six billion mobile phone subscriptions. Uh, essentially, one out of two people have, have a device. Uh, obviously, a lot are not smartphones uh, in the developing world, right? A lot are feature phones, but Android is fortunately helping disrupt uh, a lot of, kind of the entry level handsets. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting picture in, in Laos. You know, there's, as far as in the developing world, there's very little uh, of anything, very little infrastructure. Uh, but here, it's very easy to put a cell tower and essentially give everybody access to, to mobile and, and now the internet. 
There's more phones than toothbrushes. Just interesting, interesting stat, also a little bit of alarming. Uh, you know, mentioned running water and electricity. Uh, obviously, now there's more phones than TVs. Uh, you know, in a year and a half, there'll be one and a half mobile devices per person. Uh, raise your hand if you have more than one mobile device. Everybody. Raise your hand if you have more than two mobile devices. Everybody. Raise your hand if you have more than three mobile devices. Almost everybody. Wow. Uh, ten mobile devices? No, he doesn't know. He has to count. Okay. That's pretty awesome. I think I'm wearing probably four. This is a fuel band, this is a gear fit. And I have an iPhone, sorry, and a Note 3. So I'm in four on me right now. Uh, What's that? I have a feeling uh, to buy them more because I am always carrying an iPhone and Android and a smartwatch. Yeah. So I feel like I can do better now. <laughs> <laughs> You're not alone. Uh, obviously, smartphones are still. You know, we still have a ton, ton of room to grow. This is a little bit older stat um, from May, but it's still like 30% of the entire mobile phone base, right? Which is very exciting to see the enormous upside. Uh, mobile internet traffic just surpassed desktop internet traffic. Um, and right, that's what I just said. Uh, I mentioned. You know, you lose your wallet, uh, fine, but, you know, people want to report the stolen phone, lost phones a lot quicker than those wallets. Uh, so now, just kind of, I flew through those things just to create the foundation for the presentation. Um, so my passion is in, is in mobile advertising. Um, I discovered it about 15 years ago when, when I created one of my first companies called Ipsh, I-P-S-H. Um, and back then, um, if you remember, you couldn't actually send a text message from one carrier to another. Uh, there was no interoperability, so you couldn't send from Verizon to AT&T. We have similar issues today, actually, even with MMS, even though text messaging has kind of become irrelevant thanks to WhatsApp and WeChat and Line. Uh, but there was a time when text messaging was, was all there was, if you could believe that. Uh, and the first SMS, short message service, I feel like an old man now talking about SMS, uh, was sent, you know, 20 years ago. Uh, and then emerged kind of the first, the first kind of mobile advertising, which is literally sending, uh, you know, a 140 character message uh, that wasn't a tweet, right, on a handset from a brand that you would opt into. Um, so my company has actually helped power things like the American Idol text to win, right, or text to vote. When you, you're sitting on your couch, you can actually vote on a contestant that launched in 2003. Uh, a lot of brands also created those interactions with their consumers. And brands finally have the ability to create, you know, traditionally non-interactive environments like billboards and magazine ads and TV commercials actually make them interactive. Right, leveraging that mobile device. So that was revolutionary when that started happening. Um, but still, it was just text. Uh, and there wasn't much ability to text in, you could interact by text, maybe you could call into a number. But there was a, a ton of, of, of opportunity um, for rent. And then we had WAP. And WAP is also kind of a, a, a weird word to say. Um, it's a bad word now, I guess, but uh, wireless access uh, protocol, right? Um, and so what WAP uh, essentially brought to the brought to the map was uh, a little text ad, uh, the ability to put a text ad on the mobile internet on a phone. Now WAP was uh, very basic HTML, you know, no tables. Uh, when it launched, very few images, um, but it finally enabled a browser, a very lightweight browser on our handset. And there's a, a famous BlackBerry. Probably nobody in the room has a BlackBerry. Do you have a BlackBerry? I'll give you a hug if you have a BlackBerry. Anybody? No? Free hugs for BlackBerry? Okay. <laughs> uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, the world changed. You know, uh, 2007 now, this is seven years ago when the first iPhone came out. 
Um, and, you know, that changed the face of the whole game of mobile advertising. Um, because finally we had, you know, real color images, um, a decent ad unit size, you know, in the, in the palm of your hand. And so WAP was essentially on its way out because we could finally put images, we could finally put tables. Um, and it was, it was almost like your browser on your desktop. And so the mobile banner got a lot better. Um, I was lucky enough to be a part of uh, this company as well, a company called AdMob, that actually helped put uh, mobile display banners on the map. And so at AdMob, we actually, we say we, we fucked up the industry for everybody. Um, because uh, that ad unit, you know, when uh, desktop ads were created, people kind of took the proportions that were in newspapers and put them online. Right? And then we put them, we literally put the same proportions online and put them in on the mobile phone. And unfortunately, it doesn't translate very well because your finger is actually bigger uh, than the ad on your phone. And so what we ended up seeing was a lot of accidental clicks called the fat finger syndrome. Um, not because you guys have fat fingers, maybe some people do, sorry if you do, I don't mean to point you out. But your finger is bigger than the ad. Right? And so, uh, that attitude doesn't really translate, and unfortunately, that still needs to be disrupted. You know, a lot of these companies, I don't know, Quattro Millennial, made a huge business doing this, um, but there's a lot of room for that innovation uh, right now. And so some folks uh, started leveraging greater bandwidth um, and, and started making these ads uh, Animated and ultimately uh, rich media, so create video ads out of it, right? Raise your hand if you've actually seen a video ad on your, on your mobile device. So increasingly, thanks to 4G and thanks to bigger screens, video ads will probably be even more pervasive than they are on desktop. I mentioned the fat finger syndrome. Um, you know, through our research, we, we found out almost 40% of clicks to, to ads on your mobile device are accidental. Um, not only because of bots, but really because of fat finger syndrome. So other ways that, that advertisers got to devices, uh, Bluetooth that used to be popular, I'd say about 10 years ago, is less popular now, um, because now people call it blue spamming, but do you guys remember the billboards in Times Square that said turn on your Bluetooth, and they'd walk by, and you'd get a push message by Bluetooth on your phone. And it would say, you know, Pepsi wants to send this ad to you. Press yes to accept, and it sends an ad to your phone. Um, kind of annoying. In some situations, it could be fun. Um, we did a campaign with Pepsi where um, you're by a bus stop, and the bus stop asks you to accept. And if you accept, the entire bus stop lights up, right? So you can kind of create these cool interactive um, out-of-home installations leveraging Bluetooth. Obviously, Bluetooth is used now mainly for wearables um, and also eye beacons, um, which are increasing in popularity. I'll talk about that in a little bit. QR, that was the first you know, QR billboard um, that they viewed in Japan, and, and, it, and it was just a QR code, and, and people would just literally put their, open up their camera phone, and it would create an interactive experience on your handset. The reason it did take off in the US is, um, it's actually now uh, embedded in every Android device, but in all the other devices like BlackBerry and iPhone, you have to download a separate app, you know, Red Laser, for example, to get it to work. Where in Japan, you know, the carriers, Docomo and KDDI, just had it pre-installed. Um, so K QR never really took off once in a while. You'll see it in a few magazine ads, but it never really took off because it just wasn't pervasive, right? It wasn't on every single device in the US like it was in other countries. So, um, I, I mentioned mobile advertising is still broken, and, and even despite, you know, I started five companies in this space, and, and, and there's so much upside left in mobile advertising. Um, folks are not leveraging, you know, the core tenets of mobile, which are still, you know, truly contextual, you know, knows your location, knows who you are, knows where you've been, knows what you're doing. Um, and there's a bunch of companies now um, that we 
I think are, are starting to innovate and, and make this a reality. So, sorry, that's probably a little bit too small as well, but uh, high level, uh, what we're really most excited about now in kind of the 3.0 of, of mobile advertising uh, are, uh, you know, transactional ads. So, uh, commerce is literally in its infancy uh, in mobile. Raise your hand if you've bought something from your mobile device. Okay, so that's a good amount. It's about 40% of the room. Most of the talks that we give, it's literally between 10 and 10 and 20 percent. It feels like e-commerce like 15 years ago. You know, it really does. Like when you ask folks, in, if you ask folks in 2000 and 2001, has anybody bought anything online? And like, there would be that cranky old lady in the back like, no, I don't want to put my credit card online. Somebody's going to steal, steal my credit card number. People are thinking the same way about, about their mobile devices, right? Uh, and, and it's crazy, but um, that just shows you that it's all upside because it's inevitable. Uh, things like Apple Pay, et cetera, are going to make it seamless for the consumer to purchase. Um, obviously, people buy things all the time. You're, you're using an Uber. Raise your hand if you've never been in an Uber. Okay, nobody. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna take you on an Uber ride right after this. Um, you know, think about it, but that's mobile commerce, right? You put your credit card in once, um, and you forget about it, and you're just using it. Same with Seamless. Uh, now with OpenTable, you'll be able to purchase your meal right after uh, your reservation. Um, and so it's literally, literally early stages. And so we're seeing mobile advertising now almost completely um, collide and embrace commerce. So imagine being able to transact right from an ad unit, like literally one touch, one tap, um, with your fat finger and you're buying something and it's shipped and it literally arrives at your house 30 minutes later, right? Um, this is what's happening and it's literally happening right now. So the good news is phones are getting a lot bigger. Uh, you guys will appreciate this. I, I, so I've been a proud notes owner for uh, almost two years uh, and I love this screen size. And I'm, I'm kind of annoyed now because everybody has a screen size, but I told everybody that this was going to be the, the screen size of the future. Uh, you know, I think Apple did a great job of co copying the screen size. I'm a, I'm a big Apple fan, but I, I mean, they literally copied the screen size of, of the Note, which is, which is crazy. If you guys have seen the 6 Plus, it's a little bit taller, but it's the same width, same depth. Um, but anyway, I, you know, I think phablets are definitely, obviously, not a, not a fad. Uh, they're here to stay, I think, for a, a number of reasons. One is, as soon as I got mine two years ago, I noticed that my my tablet use was completely over. My right? tablets are just like posters now on my desk. Uh, but I started using my desktop a lot less. Um, Kindles also became posters, um, and I was I was watching movies. You know, on, on the tablets of perfect screen size, I was reading books. I was buying a lot more things, um, and uh, and I was using my laptop a lot less. You know, laptop functions are now relegated to, you know, maybe Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint, uh, and that's that's basically it. Especially on Android, you have great kind of Google Docs, Google Drive integration. Uh, so. Uh, I'm, I'm long on, on the fact that I think now that it's mainstream with the 6 Plus and those are being sold out all weekend, um, you know, it's going to take off. I think laptops are going to have a hard time um, keeping up. I think it's very exciting for the industry and for obviously the, specifically the mobile advertising industry. So this is kind of like the market uh, potential. You know, right now, um, obviously print and radio ad budgets are going out the window. You guys might have seen this graph. In terms of internet, actually time spent and percentage of ad spend, they're almost equal. But here you can see mobile time spend is, per person is just increasing at alarming rate, but yet ad spend is still tiny. So there's still an opportunity, a huge opportunity for brands and advertisers to pump more and more money in mobile. And they're just waiting for the right venues to do that. And that tiny banner ad is not going to facilitate, you know, moving uh, 
billions of these dollars. So Facebook is one of, if not the largest, you know, I'd say second probably to Google in terms of the largest mobile advertiser. Uh, that's a that's a cookie, but what what Facebook actually uh, you know does quite well is is targeting. Right, they have uh, the largest registered user database uh, in the world. Right, um, I think close to two billion potentially one and a half two billion total registered profiles. You know, on a monthly basis, they have a little bit over a billion monthly active users. About half of those are daily. And most of those are on mobile, right? So almost five or six hundred million daily users on mobile on Facebook. So they have they've created all this amazing data, and they've actually done a great job to make that um, accessible to advertisers. So advertisers can actually target folks based on behavior, based on location, based on context, based on gender. Um, and the ads you see in Facebook now, they used to be annoying, kind of off to the right and not relevant, are now right at the news feed. Right, and this happened about a year ago. And that's worked out well for them now. They literally are trying to play video ads without even clicking the button as you're scrolling through. Um, and I think, you know, Mark uh, is definitely not a monetization guy. He's always pushing back on the ad guys, but I think they have a nice balance now where it doesn't feel like it's commercial, but yet advertisers can still reach their target audience. Um, so I think I'm, 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 I'm bullish on. Uh,
that's an interesting way of delivery, delivering content through the sound that, that probably only dogs freak out about, but humans can't hear, uh, and it's in the background, you're not opening an app, right, to actually interact with the grid. I mentioned video, you know, a lot of people have sort of started seeing video ads, and I think HD video in particular um, is exploding on mobile. It's probably the fastest growing area of mobile advertising. Uh, these are full screen ad units, so these are not little banner ads. They are banner ads as soon as you tap them, they'll expand. Uh, the next generation, this is one of our companies called Vumble. It sounds like a bad word, but it's a mobile video ad network. Um, and uh, it's the largest of its kind in San Francisco. What's the, what they're doing now is they're creating preview or playable units so that you can actually preview the game, you know, right in the ad unit in video. Uh, and this is pretty revolutionary. I mean, you would think it's obvious, but, you know, even iTunes doesn't allow you to preview for video an app right now. Not even, not even in Android marketing. It will be very soon. But being able to preview an app in a video unit is revolutionary. And the next step is being able to actually play the game in the ad unit uh, before you buy it. So try before you buy. You're going to start seeing a ton more of these ads very, very shortly. Uh, this is a company called Keep that's in, also in San Francisco um, that doesn't believe in, in ads. They believe in rewards. So uh, after you level up in Angry Birds, for example, Pop Chips might give you like a free bag of chips, right? So it's like brands are interacting with you at that moment of serendipity. So when you're happy, you feel like this is a reward, and so it has higher click-through rate, um, and the brand has higher engagement rate. Now that we have, you know, ten devices each, um, how, how does the advertiser know that that iPad and that Android tablet and, and that Note 3 and that 6 Plus all belong to the same person? And if we can figure that out, then you can actually cycle out. sequence of 10 ads across your 10 devices. Wouldn't that be amazing? And so there's two companies that are innovating in this space. One's in New York, Tap Ad, and others in San Francisco, Drawbridge, that have basically created algorithms to, to try to guess that all these devices belong to the same person. Because the behavior is similar on each device. You go to the same websites. The location is similar. Obviously, the same devices. This is uh, the last company that, that I founded before becoming an investor full time called Local Response. And what we're doing with Local Response is leveraging all the social signals out there, like Twitter and Facebook, to make ads more relevant for you on a mobile device. So uh, if you were to tweet um, and just before a run, you would see an ad for Nike you know, on your phone. And so leveraging all the new types of data sources out there to make ads truly contextual.
Just me? You don't have to be embarrassed. I'm raising my hand. Okay, anyway. And you stop playing for like three or four days, then they can actually serve you ads through other mobile web or other mobile apps, right, with additional coins or points to encourage you to come back and play. So it's dramatically helping game developers with retention. And uh, that company has taken up like a rock ship. They now work on Twitter. Um, digital out of home is interesting. So, you know, the future of out of home of billboards is that all of these signs will be digital. And it's starting to make its way over time. This company, Vistar, enables advertisers to buy digital media out of home as if you would buy ads on a desktop and you can actually buy ads with based on location and time. So NetJets, for example, wants to target you know bankers <laughs> coming in from Connecticut that are going to Wall Street. And so they can buy Grand Central Station between 8 and 8.30 a.m. And every ad that's in the station, in the train, in the taxi will be a NetJets ad. Eventually, uh, what they want to do and potentially is is put eye beacons on these signs as well, so that when you're walking by them, it knows who you are and it can actually change the ad in real time to fit your profile. Right? It's a very minority report esque, and it probably won't be done on a one to one basis, but if a sign can know that there's more females than males looking at the sign right now, Let's change the sign, right, in real time to target females. Uh, and that's totally legit. That doesn't, you know, uh, break any privacy laws because it's on an anonymized macro basis instead of one-to-one. -one. I don't think we'll get to minority report level advertising only because uh, that has serious privacy implications. Uh, although, it's, although it's very cool tech. I mentioned I beacons. Uh, you know, I think the issue with eye beacons now is that they're just not pervasive, meaning they're not everywhere, and people's Bluetooth, uh, folks' Bluetooth is not on all the time, uh, but certainly there's a lot of investment being put uh, into beacons now. Uh, one of our companies is, is M Particle, and the big issue developers have is that they, they're installing SDKs from everybody, and your own app becomes very bloated, right? You're installing So these guys make it really easy for developers to just install one SDK and then everything that you can add is on a dashboard. Then you go to a dashboard and you say, I want to turn on local analytics, turn off next panel, I want to turn on ad mob, turn off millennial, whatever it might be. And all the settings are con contained in one dashboard. Uh, one of our younger companies is trying to do this in an automated way.
do think that that button might be a little bit too much of a, of a novelty. I don't see people doing that a ton. I mean, jury's still out. We'll see in a month when it launches. They have great support from all the banks and a lot of you know large retailers. Um, but commerce in general is, is again just at, at its infancy, right? It can be as simple as an Uber integration where you just take a picture of your credit card and it's stored in the app. And you don't ever think about it. And with Uber, you can use Amex points instead of your credit card to actually take Uber, right? And similarly with Seamless and OpenTable. And those are not going to require the consumer to use Apple Pay necessarily. Um, so that's that's inevitable. But I think one thing that's really going to help is, is developers. Now, anybody can essentially sell anything uh, with a very easy SDK, right? Um, right on that person's hand. And these don't have to be virtual goods anymore, these can be physical goods. So, you know, um, I think some companies now are, are going to be really challenged, right? Like Square, other companies in this space, because uh, Apple and Google are definitely, you know, have the largest touch points of integration with, with customers. So, that was just kind of a, a really fast, quick and dirty uh, overview of. Like 